Good morning, New Eden. Today is November 26, 2023, and this is the Federation Frontline Report. I'm your host, Frozen Fallout, and today we are uh, doing this show solo. This is the Federation Frontline Report. We're going to be talking about some of the different uh, things that are going on in this uh, universe here, and I'm going to actually switch over to the different side that doesn't have the chat over my face. Um, hello, everybody, and uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we just getting all started here, and uh, got some Z drone in chat here. <laughs> so, yeah, um, lots of uh, interesting things have happened uh, recently. We have the fall of Fleet that just happened, um, I believe, last week. And um, pirate insurgencies that have been uh, taking place here. We are currently finished with uh, the last pirate insurgency, I believe. Let's see here. Um, where'd that uh, go? I want you to be bigger. Actually, we just put you in the same size. Yeah. We need. No, we want the whole. Alright, so. Let's take a look here. Um, they have reached six out of seven of their um, objectives of corrupting systems this has already had one that's gone through um and uh this is their second fob um we have not not reached level five in suppression in any of the uh systems that uh we currently are fighting over so pirate insurgency is very very strong right now um they are currently in Black Rise over by Asakai and um, Prism, um, Push, uh, Kashiku. I don't know. I can't pronounce it. The, the, Eco, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, anyways, um, running the show solo here, we're going to kind of take a look at a few different things. Um, I believe the Angel Insurgency, uh, insurgency um, yep, it has already ended. They have Stage 5. So there is a 24-hour cooldown timer during this time. Um, while they reposition, there will be some warnings that will go out about where they'll be repositioning their FOB. There's been a lot of uh, talk about how when the FOB goes down, everything goes into asset safety, um, which can be a real pain in the ass. Um, so people are asking for it to go to asset safety still, but to have it go to Zarzak instead. Um, there's been suggestions of uh, different kind of uh, mechanisms out there in order to make that a little bit better. Um, so we'll see. So it sounds like if you destroy the uh, thing, there probably it won't be a loot pinata, which is kind of sad. I, maybe it will be. We don't, we'll see yet. Um, but it sounds like everything will just go to asset safety. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of um, speculation as to what, how best to handle things. Uh, maybe just uh, living out of Zarzak is probably one of the better things. The only problem is, is that the... You can have people camping the um, catapult or whatever, and it's uh, going to prevent them from being able to actually, you know, easily get involved in, you know, go through. You have like this extra jump that's in 0.0, .0 kind of, and is this really weird, um, you know, death space where if you get bubbled outside of the, the zone of uh, protection around, like, the gates and the station, um, you just die in Zarzak, uh, so. Um, but yeah, so it's, it, however, I do want to say that this has brought a massive um, influx of people coming to 
Losec and doing stuff in Losec. It's giving activities for Losec. So there are a few problems though from um, the, the whole system of faction warfare and how we are basically outgunned, kind of. I mean, it's 2v1 um, technically, but we're also fighting each other. So it's a three-way match. And we all have, you know, the Galente have the lowest number. The, the like, Angels have, like, an insane amount of people who went to the Angels. The Garistas have a solid amount of people. Um, and we'll kind of look over, like, the uh, kill board stats and see where these things kind of are lining up here. Um, how long are we going to be streaming for? So we'll do, like, an hour of... Um, you know, 45 minutes or so of going over this Warzone review, this Faction Warfare review, uh, how things stand after the uh, great patch of uh, an expansion of Havoc. Um, and then after that, I will probably be, um, you know, playing, you know, playing for another couple hours, maybe, give or take. We'll see. Um, but yeah, in any case, the... Our, our our attention is divided. Like, also, this is really, like, a lot of this is owned by the Keldari. I think all of this space is actually owned by the Keldari right now, um, and not by the Galente. So we have no incentive as the Galente to go over and run these sites and protect the space. So it's really, you know, we do go over there and have some fun, um, but there, and maybe to make a little bit of money, um, could maybe do some of these sites and stuff i really want to see what the orca site is like i haven't been able to get a fleet together that we could go run the uh the orca sites in but this shouldn't be too hard um those seem kind of interesting i like the idea of, I, the pirates got it great though because they can ransom it and then kill it i really wonder if you know i don't think we're going to be able to like save it and then kill it um but we, you know, so our attention is divided, though. We've got faction warfare, and we've got this pirate insurgency stuff. This insurgency stuff doesn't kick us out of that space permanently, or, like, they don't have a long-time settlement inside of it. Um, it just lowers stuff down to 0, 0.0 and uh, from high sec to low sec, which is really disrupting to the space for that period of time, but it'll eventually go away, and... Um, there's other things to worry about in the war zone for us. Um, so the Galente, you know, effort, you know, there's definitely, first of all, we have no farmers, like comparatively to anybody who was like a massive far farmer, wanted to go over to the Garistas and go over to the Angels, um, because their LP is worth three times more and they're getting the same amount as what we're getting in these sites, which is another thing that kind of holds back um, the ability for the, the the faction warfare Galente and Keldari to hold back the Garistas at this point in time. We're having a really, really rough time. Um, hey, Redneck. Um, we, we're in a really tough spot where it just seems like the it's, it's not really possible for us to hold back what is um, the pirate incursions that they're having here and so we'll see how this all kind of uh you know works out here um but since this uh has happened we have had some divergence of uh activity for sure and the Keldari have taken advantage of this um they have currently pushed back all of our so we used to own Tanolin, Anato, Aranako, um and even Sujarento for a while um these were all, you know, contested or fought over quite a bit by the Galente and owned by the Galente, but uh, mostly these three systems. Um, that has pushed all the way back. They've even taken Tanalin. Um, so the Keldari have pushed us all the way back into high sec into that area, um, which is a little sad. Um, but, uh, you know, we will, uh, I'm sure we'll be able to, to surge out of here and get things going. Um, we've definitely seen a hit on the amount of people who are playing at this point in time for the Galente, um, you know, just on average. But 
Sedition is still going strong. Um, there's a lot of fleets going out from um, the network and just general, um, like Kirk and his crew are out there um, kicking ass, taking names. So there is still a lot of activity, but a lot of people wanted to go check out this new cool faction warfare for pirates where you make three times as much money. You get like a day of downtime for it, but there is no offense and defensive sites. It's pure offense go out there you cause havoc you kill people um, you know there's there's a lot of benefit right now for being in the angels or the garistas and i'm a little torn myself um but in the end i, I want to fight with the galente i've been with the galente i want to build something here um so other things that have been kind of happening is that OICX I know is is underneath pretty heavy assault. Yep, um, they are at 80% contested right now. Um, Alderneti I believe is not horrible, but 67% contested. Um, so they're pushing back in on Vivalier here. This has uh, been traditionally a good pocket um, controlled by the Galente. And we've you know, made incursions into here. Um, but basically all of our gains, except for the south here, since the beginning of this patch have been kind of pushed back. And, you know, the, the war lines kind of have been drawn in the north. And then you've got the south as well here. So um, things are not great we've lost fleet um that is actually a pretty big hit for us um you know it's coming back under our control likely within a couple weeks here um if not sooner so this is a traditional home and where a lot of people turn in their lp so uh that station is now shut down so we'll see how uh how things kind of hold out um, but yeah, it's, it's been a interesting time since patch day. Um, and there's been lots of fleets that have been going out fighting. Um, so like you can see here, this is where the pirate incursion is currently happening. And that's deep in the back lines of the Keldari. Um, so it's, it's hard for us to actually even get out here and do stuff because we can't repair in any of these stations. Um, so it's best for us to just push the line at this point in time. Um, we haven't seen that be the case of the, the Keldari have retreated back and tried to deal with the incursion. It seems more that they have continued to push. Um, we see lots of Keldari in Hadili's in Aboon. Um, they really want to take these systems and push us out, um, Luckily, Fliet and Hadili's will always be dockable because um, they'll always be on the front line thanks to um, uh, Achi. Acti? Acti. Damn. Acti. Um, which is a point, 0 0.5 system which will force that these will always be in front line status. Um, but yeah, so. We'll see how things kind of go here. Now we do have a glimpse here that I want to bring up of Z kill. So things have been going pretty good here. Uh, we still have a decent amount of people. We have 982 active pilots in the last seven days. Um, we are at 264 corporations, 84 alliances that have, now this includes enlisted. Um, so these are people that could be in for a day or whatever, but during that time they were recorded as being part of the Galente, and um, this is a, a, a kind of breakdown of what those participants are here. And there's been 276 different types of ships that have been used in this uh, fight, in the, or who have been part of the Galente. For the last seven days, we've got um, over 68 regions that they've participated in stuff and 9,481 kills, which is a little bit um, incorrect because that takes some of that stuff comes from 
um, gate guns and stuff like that. So there are possibilities that a player wasn't involved in these stats. Um, that was Galente, but it was a Galente tower, so... Hey, I'm not familiar with the faction politics yet. What is the faction that is considered the Federation? I do know the Empire is the Amar, which I will be deleting my Amar character now because of their history. Um, so, yeah, to give you a little bit of a breakdown of the different corporation or different uh, factions that you can join at this point inside of Faction Warfare, um, we'll give you the big four, four of course, first which is the Galente, uh, Galente Federation. So they're known as being the Federation. Um, there seem to be more um, diplomacy or diplomatic. They're more um, democracy. They have a very diverse culture um, and have a deep seated amount of uh, corruption inside of the system itself. Um, you know, every, every group has a dark side to them. Um, there is no like perfect, uh, faction inside of faction warfare or sorry, in, inside of Eve online. Um, but the Galente come to be more of the, um, democracy and, you know, uh, traditional Western kind of values. It seems, um, the Keldari is more geared towards being megacorps and corporate um, control of the government. Um, and that the government is, you know, basically just part of the corporation. Um, they have stemmed from the Galente. Um, they are basically like a group that have broken off from the Galente to form their own thing. They've been at war with the Galente for a long time. Um, and they install the more kind of corporate kind of values. Um, then you have the Mimitar, which is more of a tribal kind of system. They have rebelled against the Amar, and they were the slaves of the Amar. Um, so the Mimitar are known for their, you know, um, tribal kind of um, system that they have developed, and for their freedom fighting kind of um you know breaking the shackles of slavery and then of mar of course are uh the dirty slavers and super super religious super religious people um so out of these three i picked the galente i thought that uh, or out of these four i picked the galente um i've been a Galente character. My main has been a Galente character for, you know, since 2006. So, and I've lived out of like Dodixie and, you know, the, the Galente area for a long time. And when I joined Faction Warfare, when it first came out in Imperium Age, I joined up with the Galente Faction Warfare uh, group right away. Uh, my first uh, jump into it was right into the NPC Corp just to check it out. And I've been in and out ever since. It's been one of my favorite parts of EVE Online. Um, now, there are also the Garistas, and there are also the um, Angels. Now, these are pirate factions. Um, the Garistas are like directly opposed to the Keldari and have hated the Keldari. Um, and the angels, um, let me see if I can look up something here real quick because I'm struggling to remember who the enemy of the angel um, cartel is. Let's see here. Okay, so they're operating from the heart of Curse. The Angel Cartel is today the largest and best organized of the space-based criminal factions. Um, the Angels are divided into several groups, each with very special function. 
It is commanded by um, commanded by the Domitarians, and in the century uh, they have been lurking in deep space. They have stolen, plundered, and sabotaged countless ships, and kidnapped, molested, or murdered thousands of people. The angels uh, recruit members from all races and thus have no bond to any one of the operations, uh, one zone of operation, which spans almost the entire known world. Many believe the angels got their power by uncovering Jovian technology hidden in the ancient homes now infested by the cartel. Um, So it sounds like they also mainly focus inside of the Mimitar regions, um, and it does sound like they have some kind of like connection to the Jovians. Um, you mostly find them inside of the Mimitar Republic. Yeah, so it doesn't sound like they're like so the Garistas are more stemmed from the. Uh, Keldari. So these guys kind of uh, come from, the, they're the like almighty faction. They also have like some of the coolest looking ships in the game. Um, very unique hull styles and stuff like that. So you just started two weeks ago, but you're having uh, you've been playing Star Trek Online for ten years, so have a basic understanding of ship of shipbuilding um, to bring over, so there's much greater depth to this game overall. Oh god, yeah. Uh, so I played a bunch of Star Trek um, online, and I still have I have a lifetime subscription to uh, to Star Trek, and I, I love that game. Um, it's fun, but it's super very super different. Um, whereas you have like a, a wide variety of powers, um, and the shipbuilding is. You know, very. I, there's a lot that can kind of go into the the shipbuilding. The Eve has a very different kind of focus on what you're doing with your ship, and singular focus brings into um, the, a better concept of what you're. You, you don't want to be a jack of all trades in any way, shape, or form. Um, you want to do something. You want to do it well. You want to lean into bonuses that you have. Uh, but I mean, a lot of this is very similar to Star Trek, um, but it just has a lot more stuff. Well, once you can, kind of condense it down, I feel like it's even simpler than uh, Eve Online or than than Star Trek when it comes to shipbuilding and stuff. Um, and we can talk about some of that stuff uh, maybe later, um, especially while I'm out and about flying. If you ever watch my uh, watch the stream while I'm out looking for fights. Um, that's a good time to, to hit me up about shipbuilding so I can get into that aspect of the game um, while I'm flying around hanging out. Um, thank you so much, D-Roy guy. Thank you for the follow. Um, but yeah, so right now things are going pretty rough, um, but there is lots of killing to be had out there. So, I mean, we've got a total of 9,000... 948 uh 41 kills and just more rolling in here um you know top corporation and top alliance uh alliance here at being sedition really um jerkosaurus rex incorporated um coming in with 1548 kills they are very large corporation one of the bigger controllers of uh the north and have been holding down that area for a long time now um, sedition has been bringing lots and lots of kills um, you know we are also seeing like the, the frog pond blue canary the federation defense union um, handsome millionaire playboys fleet pizza delivery tempest legion um, cooked it uh, and dirt and glitter loss Vitos D. Kelly, uh, Kenny, um, but yes, so lots of really good, uh, you know, fights being kind of done out there. We've got a lot of corporations and stuff fighting. About 982 people 
fighting for the Galente that have shown up either kills or deaths. So let's just take a look at though, what if they're only, what about just kills? So how many killers do we have out there? And let's see if we can get that to load here. So PVP, so really about only 686 of those people have been on a, a offensive. Um, they showed up on a kill mail because they shot at somebody. Um, the other, um, you know, 300 people are going to be um, people who just died. So probably farmers. Um, so, if, you know, so we're looking at a pretty decent number of still active you know, fighting for our side PvP or 686. You know, it looks like we've killed a bunch of uh, Fortizars recently that people have been participants on that kill. Um, likely these are all going to be Fortizars that are not being in low sec. Probably 0.0, .0 but let's just take a look at one real quick. Yep, 0.0, .0 Declan. Um, you know, this doesn't necessarily match up with, uh, with what we're doing, but um, let's just take a look here at the stats. Um, you know, we've been hovering around 20,000, give or take, for the last year. Um, and this is where you can kind of see where the patch happened. And so back in October... Um, November, this is when the release of Faction Warfare um, Frontline System was deployed, and this is a massive jump in the amount of kills, um, doubling, you know, if not tripling sometimes um, the amount of kills that people were receiving. Um, this, this was a really good update. Now, there isn't so much of a big jump that we're seeing yet in November um, with the patch that just came out, but we'll see a little bit better once December hits us and we finish out with December. So, uh, And then you'll get be able to rename my uh, ship once, you, um, once we get back into game. I'll make sure to make note of that. And uh, the GWV, the Galente War Vessel. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll get that up there for sure. Uh, diminisher. <laughs> All right. Um, and, you know, this is this is pretty good. I mean, 2.5 trillion, 4.2 trillion is being destroyed on the field. Um, you know, not even hitting a trillion isk for ever, basically, um, in losses. Now this is also this is can be skewed a little bit, so but uh, it's a good indicator because the next thing that we're going to look at is the Eldari. So we were seeing we're just shy of under a thousand, just a little over six hundred um, people that are PVPing um, actively for the Galente, not just losing ships. So we have here the Keldari state. So Keldari state is running right now with approximately 1,965 different characters, not necessarily people. This can be multiple accounts and stuff like that, um, but you're looking at more than double the amount of people fight for the Keldari over the Galente. Um, so that's a numbers thing that we have to overcome. We are much more hardcore kind of group of people um and this is where oop, actually i want to go to kills this is what, what will tell us like a, a good indicator here how many of these people so there you can see that they lost out on um you know 600 700 or so people that um are not really participating in getting on a kill um you know maybe they're trying some of these are trying but a lot of these are probably just people who are not trying to get into any pvp they're only dying when they get into pvp um you know some of these people might be learning um but out of 1956 so yeah 700 um just over 700 people in the keldari are not um participating in pvp where they get on a kill. 
So that does bring down the numbers a lot. It looks really bad with this number, but this number does show you something that um, is really important to kind of take into consideration here is that that means that they have 700 farmers. We have maybe 300 farmers. Um, and that number comparison there allows you to see why they're able to take space and why I find it very cool that we've been actually able to hold the front lines where they've been at for a year now, basically. There's been some push here and some push there and some push back and some failures, but mostly we've been able to take and keep the south after that patch was deployed, after that expansion went live, and then hold it while also holding the north with only sometimes losing out on that space and getting it back though. Um, because we are heavily outnumbered. Um, and that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, numbers are not everything and they're not 50% more than us. Um, well, they are still, they are almost still double us because at 190, so they're at, I think we had 600. So they're at 1,240 people. And the Galente Federation says that we have uh, just a kills 686. So not quite double um, what we have in PvP. So we still, I mean, that's, it's, it's a hard thing for us to overcome. Um, and I'm very proud of the ability for us to hold the lines, make progress when we've made progress, and to continue to, to host great fleet fights with them. Um, so, let's take a look a little bit deeper into the Keldari state here. Um, we're seeing that they have 556 corporations, 138 different alliances, they have 310 ships. They've been in 637 different systems, um, or 310 different types of ships that have been uh, killed or lost, and 88 different regions that they participated in fighting, as well as 1,584 total kills. That's total of losses and kills, I believe. Because yeah, if we go to kills, they have 794 kills. Let's take a look at what that means in comparison to the Galente. So when we go to the Galente, um, 5,618 kills. Um, so we are definitely still um, not killing as much as the Keldari, but pound for pound, each individual character is killing um, quite a bit more than what the Keldari are. are uh, doing so pound for pound we're looking really good um but if you bring it down just to the overall numbers um i would say that the keldari are definitely on the winning side of the war right now we have a lot uh, an uphill battle and we are the underdog um so join the underdog come on out and help us fight off this scourge um now let's take a look at the garistas here real quick um so Garistas now have been recently added into the uh, war here. They're, this is the third object that has come into this uh, orbital, uh, orbital system that we have created here. And they are looking really good. So one thing I want to just kind of take a look at here is that you can see um, they have existed and they had approximately 10,000 kills already underneath their belts um this is from like so if we go into this i'm pretty sure that this is all pve kind of activity yeah so they have a big skew on their um numbers here so you can see that standardly they were doing about that many kills um so you can knock off like ten thousand, maybe more um give or take. So I, I would say I would just knock off 10,000 to kind of see. So they've got about 9,860 kills underneath their belt. Um, but if you look at the Galente, let's see. 
we're at 21,000. And if you look back into our past before Faction Warfare started, which would have to be, I believe, right here. This is how many kills are, you know, were attributed back in April of 2008. Um, so you know that that's grown. Um, we can kind of see that. Let's see. So 2008, let's go back to that. Um, so they were at 600. And the Galente were at, or the Keldari. Yeah, so that is 800, or 180, so 145. And the Garistas have a lot more kills that they were part of here. Um, but that kind of grows over time. So, you know, the Galente, I would say, you know, you can kind of take out probably like 5,000. Um, and the Garistas, I would say that, uh, you know, this has slowly grown over time and it's out, you know, kind of reached about the pinnacle of about 12,000. Um, so you could take out about 10,000. So they, they're definitely not feeling like they are like super dominating the system because they only have 1,137 characters that are on their side. Um, let's take a look at how many of those are farmers. So they're in between um, the Galente and the Keldari, actually, um, with 842, um, quite a bit more still and much closer to the Keldari um, than the Galente when it comes to numbers here. Um, they have, you know, 7,000 total kills that are being attributed to them in the last seven days. Um, so you can kind of see here that there is going to be um, quite a bit of activity. It looks like, you know, 0.0, .0 as well as you know, Kaiken, um, Vivalier, Orville. Um, and this will change up where they're, you know, because these guys are going to be really active um, in there. But you can see that they, they already, you know, starting off, you know, the last two weeks, they've been able to have more people than um, the Galente have in that are, you know, getting on kill mails for them. Um, so let's take a look, though, at the Angels. And I, I suspect this is going to be where a large chunk of people have gone. Let's take a look. It's loading. What are we going to get here? Does anybody have any guesses as to uh, how many kills the... Or how many players are in the Angel Cartel? I'm going to say... Oh, 1,200 active got on a kill PvP. Um, Alright, come on now. Here we are. Oh, 2,677 characters that are in the Angel Cartel. Um, and just to take a look real quick over at the stats. Um, actually, I'm going to go to kills here. So we'll see. So how many of these guys are actually fighting for the, Kel or the Angels, getting on kills, and uh, actually participating in that level of... While we're waiting for that to load, we can kind of take a look at... Uh, so Karma Fleet of the Goon Swarm Federation is at the top of the charts here um, on the side of the Angel Cartel here. And um, with just kills... Oh, look at that. 2,100 people that are fighting. Wow, so um, I was way off. Um, yeah, so the Angel Cartel is, they've got 17,000, almost triple, <laughs> like, that's, uh, 
Definitely more than double. Yeah, like, uh, that's huge, huge amount of kills that they've got on their side here. Um, what was the, who are the big guns inside of the, uh, Garista pirates here? So Garistas we're seeing as being the Commando Guri, um, the Black Rabbits, Low Lives, um, so Top Alliances, Pandemic Horde, Black Rabbit Fraternity, Snuffed Out, looks like they've joined up with that side, uh, Band Apart, um, seems to have joined up with the Garistas, so, and then we've got with the Angel Cartel here, um, you know, mostly Goon Swarm Fraternity, The Initiative, Pandemic Horde, Brave Collective, um, so a lot of this, the Invited, um, there at the bottom, um, you can see that there is, um, a lot of influence coming in from the 0, 0.0 factions here, that this is, uh, an added bonus for a lot of the, um, 0, 0.0 factions that they can enlist, they don't have to sign up their alliance for the, um, specific side you just have to have individuals that have good enough standings um and so this has drawn a lot of people into the war zone um the mimitar and amar are again you know they're looking quite a bit um overrun here so let's take a look at the mimitar they've got 1147 um on their side so you know I think the Amar and the uh, Mimitar combined are going to um, basically not even reach the numbers that they have. Uh, in the, so the Angels outnumber both factions that are already fighting. So it's like two smaller dudes, you know, that are just, you know, your average good fighters, you know, they've been fighting with each other for a long time, and then all of a sudden it's just this big giant dude who hasn't been fighting that long, but pretty much can just like one shot you know one hit knocks you out type kind of thing um they've got they've got a huge numbers advantage whether they can take advantage of that will be seen as things progress for right now they are definitely taking advantage of that and have been dominating these incursions that they've been doing um yeah so 777 people um or characters sorry um have participated in getting on a kill mail in the last seven days for the Mimitar Republic. Um, and let's take a look at the Amar. I'm guessing the Amar are going to be a lot lower in number than this. Um, hey, hey, hey. How's it going, Token? Token, that guy. Um, so we're waiting for the Amar here to load. All right, so... Um, with the Amar here, we've got 1,002, so a little bit less. So I believe the Galente, let's double check here. Yeah, the Galente are the lowest number, which is not, not normal. I feel like we've usually had more people than the Amar, um, and then it would be back and forth. Um, but let's take a look at active PvPers that are getting on kills at 706. Um, so yeah, the the Amar and Mimitar combined do not even match. Um, that is that is sad. Uh, it's going to be a rough fight down there. The the Angels have some really cool things. They get Titans. You know, maybe we get a faction Titan out of this. That would be cool. Um, so that the, the different factions can get Titans. That would be, um, you know, something for us to dump all of our stupid amount of LP into and uh, still have to pay billions of isk in order to actually get it. So we'll see, though. Um, it's, it's been really good. So far, I have to say that uh, I think we've... see we see what we expected to see which was that the pirates were going to do really well um 
and that CCP is going to have to tweak the system a little bit in order to make it so that there is reason for the um, empires to, to actually fight the pirates. Um, and they need to make more opportunity for the pirates to work with the Galente in order to, uh, or the Keldari in order to, to damage the, the, you know, the person that they're attack, you know, the space that they're attacking. Um, we'll see though. So far, it's been really fun. There's been a lot of fights, a lot of good um, combat that's happening out there. Small gang, solo gang. Um, I would definitely advise, um, you know, not going to the corruption level five systems unless you're willing to prepare and prepared to deal with bubbles. Um, and if you're in high sec, be terrified. Be very, very terrified of these. Uh, incursions if you're in a system that is 0.7 and is nearby the faction warfare's war zones um you have the possibility of having your system drop down to low sec and people can burn down your structures so i feel like there's going to be a mass exodus from around that faction warfare zone anything that is in um 0.7 or lower um, down to 0.5 is going to have a hard time trying to justify setting up infrastructure if it's highly likely to get hit by the piracy incursion. Um, so we will see how this all kind of rolls out. Um, the, the big thing that I think is interesting is that the farmers, which help quite a bit with the... Um, flipping of systems in faction warfare and now in this thing helping create corruption is going to um, greatly benefit the amar and the garistas while their lp is triple what the um, galente can get out of their lp if if that's going to hold true continuing down the road uh, maybe it's just triple right now because of the the newness of all of this, the new ships, the new um, way of, of obtaining this LP, this new LP store itself. Um, we'll see if that comes down. And if that comes down that, and there becomes an equilibrium of how much LP is worth and if maybe we get an improvement to our LP store, more stuff for us to, to sink our LP into other than just ships. I think, uh, you know, ammo and stuff like that is, is already existing, but we need more things for us to sink the RLP into. And until that happens, um, it's, it's, it's going to be a rough ride, you know, and there is some changes that can be made to the system of how much corruption and how much, uh, suppression happens but i i uh, if if the lp is to be so much better over on the enemy side like that's i mean we saw that that was some of the problems with the old system uh having better lp encourages people to want to go over to that side uh, they don't they won't have the crash problem which we had which was that it would go you know your lp would be worth a whole bunch and then be worth almost nothing because of how much LP was being able to be pulled in. Um, but yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, things are looking like uh, you know they, even with the flaws that are in the system right now, how the Keldari um, and Galente and Mimitar and Amar really can't stop these insurgencies. It's been an awesome patch, a really awesome patch. Um, I mean, yeah, we could, we do have the ability to build up ENIs, but that's, there's only so much ENIs that are getting destroyed every day, um, and we can outproduce that. That's a problem. Um, so the price is not going up on ENIs right now, unfortunately. Um, so we'll see, though. I'm uh, interested to see what the... Uh, future patches come to improvements. There was hints of improving the LP store at some point. So. 
All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things on up here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And have a great day. Um, stick t stay tuned after the show. Um, we're going to be doing some, you know, PvP out in Faction Warfare land. I'll be open to answering more questions. Um, I also, you know, check out um, the um, Declarations of War podcast. Really awesome podcast out there. Um, check out the Federation Frontline Report in-game. Um, we are recruiting. We're looking for people who want to do U.S. time zone. Um, be out on the weekends and the weekdays. Um, you know, killing, murdering, fighting, reporting, and uh, learning about what's going on in EVE. Reporting that out. Um, you can always help out with the podcast. Get paid to uh, sell us some news, you know, and segments and concepts. Yeah, thank you all so much and have a great night.